transition and, and, and kind of bring it current day. And I know I've heard you allude to it um, a little bit, and I'm gonna ask a vague question, but what's wrong with boxing? And I, what I mean by that is recently, right, during the time we've been in this pandemic, we've seen these celebrity fights come about, right? The YouTubers and some of the old timers and that's doing more numbers in the box office, pay-per-view, television, social media than the actual fighters, the champions, the, the, the top dogs on any level, right? What, what do you think, in, in your opinion, is wrong with boxing today? And why are people flocking to the YouTube fights than they are the actual real championship fights? I was a sucker. I bought that, that uh, YouTube oh. fight. I was a sucker. Yeah. There's a so. sucker board every day, Troy. There's a sucker board every well, day. This guy was born November 19, 1962. Yeah. <laughs> And I was a sucker for it. So I don't really know exactly what it is other than, uh, I mean, I, I can say, if I say that back then, it was box, boxing was boxing. Well, in 1990, they were saying boxing was 10 years ago, or, you know, so I just don't really understand what's going on. It's, it's the, the money and these people taking opportunities to, to uh, make all that they can, I guess. And I, I would do the same thing. My wife won't let me fight again. I've talked to her about it. <laughs> Coming out of retirement, fighting a UFC fight. I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu also no. under Travis Luter. And uh, he's, uh, he's amazing. He's ama he was in the UFC. He fought in the UFC. But uh, my wife says, no, no more fighting. But anyways, I'm not sure exactly wrong. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Maybe in partial, probably because of money. 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 Money make you do some funny things. Now. Some crazy things and some things that are right. What, what would you say about embossing today with, again, in your time, the best fought the best, right? If you, if you were pound for pound this, or you were pound for pound that, or you were the number one contender, or number two contender, or whatever it was, the best fought the best. Um, Usually so, there was some, there was some mixture there where, where only, only, you could only get a fight with the best guy if X, Y, Z happened. But yeah, like I see what you're saying. So in, in, do you think in today's time, you know, you look at, Errol Spence Jr. and you know Terrence Crawford, right? That 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 you you're familiar with that division, yes, right? Sir. You know, we as a fan, we all want to see it, right? But there's something happening behind the scenes, whether it's promotion, management, whatever it is, that's like that fight's not happening, and like there are all these other ancillary fights happening around it with these people that we want to see. Could that be some of the issues with you know getting those top fighters to fight each other? I'm not sure what, why they wouldn't. I'm not sure why they wouldn't. Other than, uh, of course, we all deal with ego, right? There's ego. There's a, I'm not going to fight him because he's it's too risky. You know, you got to be smart. But ego but, says, in this sport, ego says, I'm the man. Like, right. I, I, I'm the man. I, 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 we all in the same weight division. I, I want to be I want to be the king. I don't want them to say, oh, I'm, I'm 1A or 1B. No, I want it to be. That's ego. Ego right. says... If you're the best and I'm the best, That's there can good. only be one best, right? Right? And you can be the second best, or I can be the second best, but we need to find out who's the best. Because I don't like second best. Exactly. So ego would say, "Hey, you know, we can do all this outside talking all we want, but th th there's a square circle that we can get in and really have." You See, know, have yeah. it out, and and I, I, I you know, is, that's not happening. That's not happening enough, I guess, in 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 today's sport. Why? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's because of you know, people are. I almost almost start thinking about people are getting. You know, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, th there wasn't the, the fighters that are. Uh, I guess we could use track. Uh, what was the record time for the hundred? 100 meter, 100 yard dash 25 years ago. What was it? I don't know if it was uh, 9.8, but now it's almost breaking nine seconds. So I think athletes are getting better, but something behind the scenes, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's the greed, it's the uh, not willing to work, it's the... Uh, Will that kill boxing? 
Will that greed, will that not willing to work together, will that kill the sport of boxing? Will people, will, will people just begin not. to go and do different things because they're saying, you know what, you know, I, I'd rather go watch the YouTuber because right. I can't get Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence to fight. What, is that the type of greed that can actually, in the long run, kill the sport of boxing? It could. Yes, sir. Yeah, because because the, the, everybody sees who who's there and who can fight and who who couldn't fight and who should fight, and that's what it is. If, if, if they're just not going to fight because because that they think they might get beat, you know, that's just part of the risk. That's that's what boxing is. You win or you lose. And of course, there are some people that have have, have uh, never lost, but it's just uh, I think I think it's greed. Greed. Greed and, uh, you know, uh, fear that they're going to get beat. So that happens sometimes. And you just got to, sometimes you got to risk it. Just like in life, you got to risk. Of course, you want to make, you want to be, you want to be, take the smart risk. <laughs> right. <laughs> you can't just take any old risk. It's got to be a smart risk. Well, while we're in that division, let's talk about some of those guys, right? Errol and, and Crawford and Lomachenko and Javante Tank and, and all these guys, you know. Who's the best? Who who is the best from Troy Dorsey's perspective? I like and why? I, I like Errol Spence. He's fast. He's smart. He's uh he's uh he's tough. So that's who, that's who I would pick. If you were fighting Errol, what would you say his weakness is? Uh, that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> that's tough to say. You know, he is, he is where he's at because he's so good. Right. He's so fast. He's so strong. He's trained. Uh, he's serious. He lives in DeSoto, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so he's right here in our in our, in our our uh, community, uh, 50 miles away, 40 miles away, something right. like that. But uh, I just tend to be smart and fight, fight when he can and and because uh, it's not going to last forever. As we all know, the boxing game – and, and even in the world, right, there are some dirty things about oh, it. Oh, yes, sir. When it comes to the promoters, when it comes to you know, all the different things behind the scenes. Like, if you were in a place or in a position, what would you change about that part of boxing when it comes to the promoters and the, 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 the fight game of it? Like, what those dirty parts of the game that people don't see that's outside of the ring, right? Gloves are off. That stuff that happens away from the ring. What, what, would, what would Troy do differently if you if you were in a position, maybe in your own career with the people that you dealt with, and in the and in the boxing game in general, well, just for it to be all truth, you know, they just be truth. It, there's so much uh, behind the scenes that goes on that's not really, uh, well, it's not really the way it should be. Give us an so, example. Well, uh, one time I, when I fought for the world title, I fought Jorge Paez for the for the world title in 1990. In February, and uh, he had problems making weight, and I busted my tail to make the weight, and it was always very difficult. We fought at 126, and so things happened, and he had a real difficult time in uh, in making weight, and then uh, so he just had he had a real difficult time, and that's really all I can really say, uh, but uh, it wasn't right what happened. Mexicali, Mexico. Apparently, the weight problem has not affected his in-ring personality. Comes in at 33-2 and two draws, 25 by knockout as he gets set to meet up with Troy Dorsey. We'll be back with the fight scheduled for 12 in a moment. It wasn't right what happened. Uh, I got to talk about like what what did they you know manufacture his weight did they say that he made weight and did make weight yeah and so you know those 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 scales you can adjust them right mm. you can adjust them so they adjusted them he weighed like 129 really and then i weighed 126 but then i then we had to redo the weigh-ins and they just kind of checked the scales and made it look like we weighed 126 gotcha. but, but he weighed 129 130 something like that so that was uh, if, if, if yeah, that would be that would be great if uh, if I could change that. But there's just so much money. It's not like I I, made, I didn't make a million dollars when I was fighting. Uh, probably he did, but uh, 
there's so much money involved. When there's a lot of money involved, then you got crookedness. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's what the Bible says. So uh, it's the truth. People, people, I mean, I love money too. I mean, I, uh, I need money for my family. I need money for certain things, but uh, it, it's the love of money. That's the, that's the, that's the thing that we shouldn't be. We gotta, we gotta get over, uh, get over that because I'm where I'm at because I got myself where I'm at. And uh, people go through some horrible, horrible things that they don't get themselves into. In other words, sickness and all kind of things like that. And things happen bad to people, to good people even. A lot of, a lot of bad things happen to good people, and a lot of good things happen to bad people it's, it's no there's no I used to think that be, because I was uh, because I was following the Lord that I would be okay not, not that I would be okay that nothing would go wrong for some reason I had that, that work feeling in my mind yeah you're laughing at me of course any, anybody with any experience would laugh at that that statement thinking that the Christian has an easy life no Look at all what Job went through, and just all, all the all the disciples, all of them got beheaded, I believe, except one. And I think he got crucified upside down, and one uh, lived until he died, till till uh, old age. But anyways, it's uh, we just have to know that things are going to come. So the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So I'm unjust, so it falls on me, and it falls on the people that are just, right? Right. So we just have to keep pushing forward in this life that that we're living and try our best to do the right thing and try to love on people, love people and love God. And, and if you'll do that, and uh, I'm not saying it's always going to be great, but that's all we got. Are there some... He said that Jesus is all we have and he's all we need. Yeah, absolutely. Are, are there any quote unquote good guys in the promotion part of boxing. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure there's still crooked people and there's, there's still good people also. I'm not sure who's, who's the good and who's the bad. I'm not going to be the judge of that. But, uh, yeah, when, you get, when you're dealing with lots of money, yeah. then when people get uh, stepping on toes and doing things behind your back and, and uh, uh, ripping you off and things like that. So you just, it's just, it's just going to happen. That's, I don't know, I'm human and everybody else is human and they're, they're uh, of course, I've never been selfish, right? Well, of course I've been selfish. selfish. Of course. So that's what it is. It's selfishness. That's what it is that we have to avoid. And I, I fight that, that battle all the time because I'm a 10th degree black belt, because I'm an eight-time world champion, because whatever it is, you know, the, I, I can get fed those lies. And I think all of us, we get fed certain lies. And even, even though I did win, I mean, there's only six belts there. Two of, the, two of the, or three of the, three of the champions I won, there were trophies in uh, kickboxing and, and uh, two in boxing and one in, in uh, karate. But anyways, uh, we all get fed those lies of, of uh, the lie of thinking that we're it. It's me, 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 me. You know, like I said, look at this, and look at this, and look at this. But it's not about that. Uh, my goal is just to make our students uh, better human beings. They'd be a black good in, in, in their character. To be a black belt in their self confidence, to be a black belt in their uh, in their uh, physical fitness, and be a black belt in their mental fitness. That's that's my goal. So it's not the person that can kick the highest. It's not the person that can kick the fastest. It's the per it's the it's people that are giving it their very best. Had a, a student started with me. He started karate with me in 1982. His name was Virgil Sioko. He started February 1982. He got his black belt. And he lived till he was 91 years old. He, he passed away a couple of years ago. He trained until the almost, almost until the very last day that he died. He had a heart attack. I don't know how he had a heart attack. You know, but people that they train all the time, run marathons, or, or maybe they just run for what? Anyway, they take care, good care of themselves, and uh, they still die of heart attack. Right. So I don't. This guy was in great shape, but he was my most dedicated student ever. He trained from the time he was 58 to the time he was 91 years old. And he was unbelievable. Not skill wise, not skill wise, not necessarily. He, he didn't kick high and fancy, but right. he was just, he was just okay. I'm gonna do the work, and I'm gonna. And he was so thankful for me, and uh, he was. It, 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 there was no pride at all. This guy was an unbelievable uh, person, and he said that the martial arts is what did that for him. So that's what we want to do. That's my goal. If uh, if I can, if I could have 
one more Virgil Sielko, that was his name. I almost pretty much done my job. So it's about setting goals, it's about respect, it's about doing what you're supposed to be doing. And no one's watching, having integrity. Right. Well, today I got better because I had a chance to sit here and talk to you, listen to you, and be in your presence. And I thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I want to raise your hand because this was a championship interview, guys. Troy Dorsey.